So, here we are, the final two episodes. With this season finale, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 4 is done. And what an ending it was. So, before I get this started, I just want to say if you haven't watched the Season 4 finale, don't even bother watching this video yet, because I'm about to spoil everything. And I mean everything. We're going to go over every nook and cranny, every detail that I found in this two-part episode. So, with that in mind, let's get started. Alright, so first off, I'm going to start talking about part one. This is a two-part episode, so I'm going to get to part two after this. Duh. So, this episode actually tackles a subject that I think most of us in the fandom have found out from the get-go. We've noticed this from basically the beginning of season four. Twilight, as a princess, really, she doesn't amount to much to take words that she's actually said from the episode. She feels like her role as a princess is undecided. She doesn't know, and truth be told, we don't either. We have no idea what she's supposed to do, why she's a princess in the first place, because honestly, she doesn't do much princessly stuff. Here and there she does things, like judge for a meet and greet and swapping thing, wave and look pretty to delegates of another land, but other than that, honestly she doesn't do much princessly stuff. Heck, she doesn't even control anything in Ponyville, and she lives there. So I really like that. And we also get a rockin' song, which just goes to show that, you know what, we really need to have more princesses singing songs. Because A, I love Cadence's voice, B, we finally get a Luna singing thing, which is awesome, and C, we get more awesome Celestia vocals. Come on, Celestia has like the most rockin' vocals ever, and I really wish that they do more songs with the princesses singing, because that song was awesome. Next we get introduced to a new villain. His name is Tirat, and he is the best villain by far on MLP. The best. Here's the thing, I used to like Discord. Discord was my favorite villain. He was like, yeah, this guy's one big mamma jamma. He's the king of chaos. And he has toppled over Ponyville and turned it into a horrible place and just, he's an awesome guy. I love it. But T-Rack makes Discord look like a little baby booby bat. This guy can steal your very essence. What makes you special? He basically can steal your magic, your wings, your strength, anything. He basically takes away your cutie mark along with that, making your special talent not your special talent anymore. That's pretty cool. Not only that, but that also throws Equestria into a bigger chaos. Think about it. If Equestria can't be controlled by the Pegasi, tilled by the Earth Ponies, and protected by the Alicorns, what's it's got? What's it stops the Everfree Forest from coming in like it did in the first episode, I mean granted the Tree of Harmony, but like if something like that were to happen again, Ponyville and every place in Equestria would be defenseless. We would have nothing. It would be gone. That is huge. That is big. Sure, Discord took over Ponyville. Sure, he created a lot of stuff and did a lot of bad things, but nothing of this grand scale. t -Rex took everyone's abilities. Like, he's going around and taking everybody. He's not stopping at Ponyville. He's not stopping at Canterlot. He's going all around Equestria and just wrecking everything. And I love it. I feel like he is way better than Sombra was. Duh, he, Sombra's obviously the worst villain we've gotten. He's way better than Chrysalis. And he's way better than Discord right now. And he is by far the best villain we've seen in MLP so far. But here's the thing. Here's one thing I don't like about him. The fact that he just pops up out of nowhere. Granted, he does get a bit of a backstory. And that's cool. We also get Star Swirl the Bearded again. Awesome. However, I am really getting tired of these villains that just pop up out of nowhere with no context. I mean, granted, now, Sombra was kind of a thing that, you know, we were like, oh, we don't know what this is going on here. What's this thing? I understand they want to go with an element of surprise. And Chrysalis was perfect for that. Chrysalis, I'm okay with, you know, coming out of nowhere. But t I think, should have been alluded to in the season. Somewhere. I feel like he should have been alluded maybe in the halfway point. Maybe somewhere along the first part. Something. He should have had some way for us to know that, hey, this guy is coming and he's gonna wreck Equestria. We should have known. And I really think that next season, the writers really need to focus on their villain. If they plan on having a villain, let's have, like, a season-long villain. One that we know is coming. We don't know everything- we don't need to know everything about him, but I feel like we need to have something. 
because I'm tired of just having these villains appear out of nowhere. And it's like, I want to know more about these villains. And we're not getting that. And I really think that that is the shortest shortcoming of this first part, is that Tirak is an awesome villain, he has an awesome backstory, but we have no clue how he gets out of Tartarus. And I feel like that's really something that they could have done. Granted, time constraints are one thing, but I feel like if they'd spread him out throughout the season, like granted, they allude back way back into another season, like, oh, well he got out because Cerberus left his post. Why did Cerberus leave his post in the first place? What happened? Seriously, we really should know, like, okay, this is what happened. This is how Cerberus got out. Oh, he must have thrown a bone or something, some mystical thing. But we don't get any of that, and I feel like that just is a really bad mark on this episode. Otherwise, this episode was awesome. I loved it. I love the fact that T-Rex convince Discord, hey, you don't need friends. You need freedom, and I can offer it to you, because I'm one big mamma jamma. Once I control Equestria, guess what? You don't gotta answer to nobody, because I control it. Love that. I love it. I also love seeing that Discord is Discord again. Granted, he's just, you know, Discord, and he's not really changed that much. I mean, granted, the first episode, he was, uh... But overall, the season, he's like, you know, kind of gotten back to the trickery kind of guy that I like. And I also like that beginning part of this episode, he actually shows Twilight, hey, here's your little diary thing, you might want to read it, maybe. Just saying. And I've noticed that he seems to be kind of helping, but not really. Like, he tries to help, and he's just like, but I don't really want to give you guys too much info, so I'm gonna leave you with this little thing, little tidbit information. I love that about him, and I honestly hope we see more of that. So let's move on to part two of Twilight's Kingdom. So moving on to part two, T-Rex power is growing. Celestia, Luna, and Cadence know that the stuff's about to hit the fan. So what do they do? They ask Twilight, Twilight, we're going to need you to take our magic. This is big, really big. Mainly because, especially for Celestia and Luna, they kind of control a lot. I mean, think about it. If there's no moon and no sun, raising and lowering stuff, chaos will ensue. And we saw that from the first bit of season four. And also, Cadence controls stuff too. Yeah, not gonna talk about Cadence. So they basically put all their power together, one giant orb, and put it into Twilight. Dear Lord, the amount of magic that flows through that pony's body right now. I mean, seriously, could you imagine having celestial bodies, being able to control all that, and also having all of Cadence's magic? I know, Cadence doesn't do much, but I'm just saying. Having all that magic in one body, how much strain that must put on her? Like, I don't know how much, if that's painful in any way possible, I don't know if that's you know, has something to do with- she's obviously losing control of her magic because it's shown that she's, you know, busting down doors, flying books everywhere, teleporting to crazy distances, and also, you know, raising the sun and moon in hilarious ways. I actually got more of a laugh out of that than I probably should have. Yeah, she's pretty much, like, got too much power. She's too amped up, and she doesn't know how to control that, and I don't blame her. That's like having the element of magic on 24-7. Like, that would be just too much, I think, for her to handle on a regular basis. Maybe it's some point she can, but right now, no, there's no, no point in doing that. So, T-Rack is in Canterlot now, and Discord senses a disturbance in the force, and he's like, oh, well, that can't be right. But t rex like, what are you talking about, man? And he's like, oh, nothing, nothing at all. Here's the thing that makes me think that Discord may be out for more of himself than t rex is thinking. t rex may think that, oh, Discord, he, I've got him at my side, and he doesn't, because... Later on in the episode, I'll talk about that in a sec. But Discord, I always felt like throughout this episode, Discord kind of was like, I'm, I'm kind of treading lightly here. And it's also proven because later on in the episode, he's like, you know, I didn't want to give you too much of my info. I want to keep my cards close to my hand in case you double cross me, which backfires on him. But again, I'll get to that in a sec. After that, we get a cool scene with Shining Armor. And I absolutely love the way that t rex takes Shining Armor's powers. Because it just shows that he's like, I am not gonna have any of this. Like, he just is so, I almost want to say violent, but he's not violent to Shining Armor. Anyway, he just kind of grabs him and just sucks it all out of him. And it, it just, it felt like so like, dude, this is heavy. 
So anyway, T-Rex gets to the castle, and he busts down the doors. He's like, boom, ripping the doors off the hinges, and he's just like, where is your magic? Because he tries to take Celestia, Cadence, and Luna's magic, and he can't, because it's already gone. And so then he banishes them to Tartarus. That's harsh. <laughs> That's really harsh, especially since... Technically, they can't do anything. I suppose he's thinking long term. He's like, yeah, I, I own this place. So you know what? You guys, I'm getting you out of my hair because I don't know what you guys might do. And so he just gets him out of his hair. But honestly, I feel like that's a little overkill because like they don't have any magic left. They can't fly. They don't have any magic. What are they going to harm? What can they do, right? They can't send letters to Twilight. They can't do anything because there's nothing anyone can do. There are no Pegasi anymore. There are no Earth Ponies anymore. There are no Unicorns anymore. Nothing. I don't even think they could send anything, any sort of parchment anything, to anyone. I think they would just basically have to sit and do nothing. I mean, unless they want to travel by hoof, and honestly, it seemed like they were all too weak to do that anyway. Just a thought. Back to the episode. Tyrick comes to Ponyville, and this scene in particular is one of the heaviest scenes I've seen in quite some time. Discord at first is like, yeah, I brought these cucumber sandwiches, and Fluttershy's all happy to see him, and then he puts them in a cage. Discord at first says, you must have seen this coming. And Fluttershy crying responds, No, I didn't. I really didn't. That just shows how much Fluttershy has faith in Discord. And it was just so, like, it almost, it broke my heart. It really did. To see Fluttershy just so, like, like, wow, man. I trusted this guy, and he's double-crossed me. Like, I put all my faith in this guy, and he just, it doesn't amount enough to him to want to stay my friend. That's, that's really, I, I don't know, that was really just like an emotional bit, and I really liked it. I really did. t rack begins taking the main six's abilities and whatnot, and here's the thing that really makes me really confused about Discord. He turns away, so it proves that he's not completely evil, but yet he sides with t rack and it's really confusing to me as if he cares so much about these ponies as to not be able to look at them when they get their abilities taken away from them, then why would you side with T-Rex in the first place, bud? I mean, honestly, it doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, granted, he's not pure evil. He's never been pure evil. Discord's always been out to have a good time. He's never inherently been like this evil, maniacal monster. He's just been the king of chaos. And he just wants to have a good time and have fun. And so, on some level, I can understand why he's just like, Yeah, I want to be free, but I don't want to watch these ponies get hurt. I don't want any pony getting hurt out of this. I just want to be free. And now we get to the part where I was like, Oh my gosh! So, basically, we all saw this coming. So, t rack at this point, says, Yeah, you thought we... We're gonna control the quest for- <laughs> Yeah, no. No. Just gonna be me. And T-Rex says, You surely saw this coming, didn't you? And Discord says, No, I didn't. I, I really didn't. Which reinforces that line. And I love that. So, T-Rex takes Discord's power. I thought that he was just a beast of magic and just couldn't- Like, his abilities were part of him. And, duh. Every pony's abilities are part of them, and so it wouldn't make sense on a level, but I was just so shocked by it, I was like, WHAT?! And so, Discord's power is gone now. He's no longer the King of Chaos. He doesn't have any powers. And that to me is just like, okay, this is bad. This is real bad. And it just reinforces why I love t so much. The guy is just a monster. Like, he does not care who he steps on. He's gonna get his way. And I really think he's a good villain for that. Again, I really wish we'd get more development for this guy. But honestly, he's just a cool character. So anyway, let's get back to the episode. Because next up, we're gonna have something epic happen. Okay, so you know how I said something epic's about to happen? We get the best fight I have ever seen in My Little Pony. The best. <laughs> You thought this was a show for girls? Uh-uh. <laughs> We're throwing that out the window. This fight is the best. Like, it is the most epic fight I've ever seen in this show. Ever. Like, most of the time, the villains just go down. Like, we, they just bring out the MacGuffins of Harmony, 
and they're just like, okay, we're gonna shoot this giant rainbow at you. We're done. Good night. No. <laughs> T-Rex does not get that. T-Rex gets a very upset Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> so T-Rex destroys Twilight's library, and at this point, Twilight is. She is so that she shoots a giant laser beam of death at T-Rex. And he causes so much destruction. I don't know where they are. Like, I guess they're somewhere in between Ponyville, the um, Everfree Forest, and the Pony Sisters Castle. Somewhere in there, there's a giant field that's just destroyed after this. <laughs> because this fight is just so massive. It was just one of the best fights ever. It, is, it was so well choreographed. There was so much, so many good camera angles. I love my good fights in cameras. Like, when they have a good sweeping motion with camera angles and stuff, I love it. And this fight was just the best. Honestly, I hope we see more fights like this when we get a season finale villain. I hope that we don't have to break out the you-know-whats, which I'm gonna talk about in a sec, to fight a villain. I honestly hope that we get epic fights like this. Because, honestly, this was an awesome fight, and I just can't reiterate enough how cool it was to see it. It reminded me of Celestia and Luna's fight, granted a lot longer, but it reminded me of when Twilight drank the flashback potion and saw Celestia and Luna fight. That was awesome, and this is equally as awesome. Granted, this one's a lot longer than the other one, but still, this is awesome. So, after this epic fight of epicness, I can't reiterate how epic that fight was. Like, honestly, I could watch just that fight and be completely satisfied. But anyway, T-Rex like, alright, so, I can't beat you. But you can't beat me either. How about this? I trade your friends for all the magic in Equestria. That's it. Nothing else. Honestly, I, I don't know how to feel about this. I, I completely understand why Twilight would say yes to this. Because they are her friends. But not only in the show, but also in the comic books as well. I'm not going to touch on the comic books. However, I feel like we need to do something about her friends. I'm not saying get rid of them, obviously. But they need to have some way of defending themselves from, from getting captured. Like, this is like the second time off the top of my head this has happened. Where Twilight's, you know, at an impasse. And the villain comes up with her friends and is just like, Yeah, you'll do anything for these guys, right? I don't like that. I honestly don't. Granted, there probably wasn't another way they could have solved this. This was probably a time constraint thing and just like, okay, we are kind of running out of time here. Um, just do this. I'm completely fine with that. And honestly, I wouldn't expect Twilight to say, no, you keep them. I don't want them. Nope. I understand that. And I'm completely fine with it. It's just a little nitpick that I have is that I wish it could have been done different. However, she does also take Discord as well which shows that she's still got faith in the guy. Even after he double-crossed them, even after all the things that he's done, Twilight still has faith in the guy. And she still feels like, you know what, this, there's something here left to redeem. He knows now that t is not the be-all end-all, and I like that. So, after t takes Twilight's magic, we get another really emotional scene from Discord. Like, this guy, Tom Delancey, you're just an amazing man, love you. But in all seriousness, this is a really emotional scene, and I really like it a lot. We get a side of Discord we don't see very often. The apologetic, the, you know what, you were right. Turek lied to me, and he gave me this medallion as a sign of trust and loyalty. And he lied. But when I give you this medallion, I truly mean that this is a sign of our friendship. I cannot stress enough how awesome that was and how emotional that was. It was just such a good, well-written part and performed spectacularly. Like, it was just awesome. Discord finally gives Twilight the final key and we finally get to see what's in that box. And what does Tyrrhic do with all that power? He wrecked. I've got all the power in the whole freaking world. You know what I'm gonna do? Just wreck. Why not? Let's see, it's what I do with it. <laughs> but anyway, so Twilight and the gang finally open the box. Of and you know what we find in it? Rainbow Power! So when I first saw this, I was thinking, oh great, here we go. The Elements of Harmony are gonna get remade, and we're gonna get the MacGuffins again, and everything's gonna go back to normal. I may get that at some point, but also, it's not that bad. Honestly, their Rainbow Power designs, eh, they're not bad, but also, I kind of feel like I personally just was like, ugh. Okay, kinda ugly, to be honest. So, once the girls have their ability to rainbow up, 
they open the box and they get these rainbow powers. Then they fight T-Rex in the most just OP way possible. They're just like, yeah, um, laser beam, done, we're good, put T-Rex back in the cage. And then they go out and restore the abilities and powers of every pony in Equestria. And what I actually thought was a nice touch was each race kind of restored their respective races' abilities. Like, Rarity and Twilight restored the unicorns, Pinkie Pie and Applejack restored the Earth ponies, Flop... Widershy? What? Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash restored the Pegasi. We also got to see Derpy, like, twice in this episode. Didn't even mention it once, except now. There you go. But anyway, after that, they return to the Tree of Harmony, and the box kind of does a weird thing in where it takes all the rainbow dust and just... Oh, I'm gonna eat it all up again. And then it shoots a giant rainbow out of into the sky and goes into the ground. Now, here's the neat thing. That box probably wasn't a box at all. It was a seed of harmony. And it took me till just right now to realize that. Because it came from a flower and it was there for a seed and nobody ever thought of this, did they? Nobody was like, oh, that's a seed for the Tree of Harmony right there. Never crossed my mind. Never in a million years did I think of that. And it was so, it was staring us right in the face. And I guess nobody thought of it. Nobody. Until now. Dunno. Anyway, so after that seed has gone to the ground, it sprouts a house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It sprouts a giant tree that is Twilight's house now. So, goodbye library! <laughs> I'm gonna make a castle now! So, yeah, that's something. And also, she is now the princess of friendship. She's no longer the princess of magic. Maybe she was never there to begin with. She is now the princess of friendship. And as such, her friends are also princesses. Everyone's a princess! You're a princess! And you're a princess! And you're a princess! And you're a princess! Everybody's a princess basically. That's the gist of what I got out of that. I was like, okay, so we get a council of Equestria now or something? All right, fine. Just forget about the monarchy. So this brings up an interesting topic I actually have been thinking about since season four. Well, actually since Twilight got her wings in the first place. What the heck's happened to Mayor Mayor? Since Twilight now officially <laughs> air quote, air quote, is a princess. She's got her own castle now. She basically is no longer just the chick who lives in the library. That makes me wonder, okay, does she now usurp Mayor Mayor? And kind of just like, yeah, um, I'm a princess now, so... Goodbye! You're no longer needed. Honestly, what I think a more realistic goal is probably going to be is Mayor Mayor is going to come to her before she passes any kind of laws or anything like that. Like, hey, uh, Princess Twilight, I was thinking of passing this law that lets everyone ha wear um, bikini bottom shorts on Mondays. Uh, what do you think of this? And Twilight's like, I think that is a wonderful idea! Pass! So, um, yeah, the, I, I don't know. But honestly, I'm wondering if maybe it's more like, uh, kind of like a council, like I said, where it's like, oh, Mayor Mayor, what do you want? I want to pass this law that forbids soda drinking, or in Ponyville. And, um, Twilight's like, all right, all right, I'll take this into account. Um, okay, let me discuss with Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Rarity, and see, and we'll get back to you. Okay, we're, ba we're back from our meeting, and um, we've decided that that's stupid, and no. I don't know. There's so many things, again, I feel like I'm back at season three, where it's like, okay, um, there's so many questions that I need answered, I have so many things that I need to know, and we'll just have to wait until season five, which actually comes out in a year. Comes out 2015. No specific date, just 2015. That's fine. I need the break. <laughs> so anyway, that was the season. That's season four. Honestly, a lot of ponies think that season four was kind of the weaker of them. It probably doesn't fall near as low on the fandom chart as season three does, but it's nowhere near apparently where season two was, if polls are correct. I'm not saying polls are correct. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Honestly, I feel like this is a strong season, and I like this season. Is it the best season ever? No, I don't think we've had that yet. As long as this series is still going, it has room to improve. Always. And forever. There will never be a best season until this thing is done, and then we're like, okay, now let's look and see what 
the best season actually was. But that's just my opinion. And honestly, I feel like this episode, these episodes were wonderful. Did they have some weak points? Yes. I feel like the final, final fight with Tarak was a little rushed. I feel like they were running out of time and they were like, okay, we'll just uh, MacGuffin power and he'll be done. They need to do some balancing with the elements. I feel like these things have become so overpowered that it's just like, okay, we'll one shot everything. The only time we didn't get that was when Chrysalis took over, and even then we still got a one shot with the power of love. I honestly feel like we need more epic fights. Like, look at Twilight and Terex fight. Why didn't we get that? with super-powered friends. Like seriously, why didn't the main six fight? Like that would've been so cool to see. I would've paid for that. <laughs> and not just, choo, rainbow power. We're done, goodbye, that's it. I love this, these episodes. These episodes paid off. This is probably my favorite season finale of every season. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on this. If you have your thoughts or want to share your thoughts, go ahead, go right ahead, comment down below telling me, you know, this is what I thought about these episodes. But anyway guys, I'm Ultramag64, remember, don't feed those Paris Frights, and as always, happy gaming. I'll shake you guys in season 5, bye. Now I know